Today, though, we're going to talk about malfunction junction. And uh, this is the last message of this series of messages uh, that we are looking at um, Abraham and Lot in Genesis 12 and 13. And malfunction junction, almost every city has one of these. Uh, Our malfunction junction is where 26 and 240 and 40 connect, and it's always a mess. It just, it seems like traffic jams happen there all the time. Frustration happens there all the time. Your schedule gets knocked out of whack if you've got to go through that. Uh, Accidents happen there all the time. And there are malfunction junctions, I believe, in your life and my life. Uh, just seasons, opportunities, chapters, times, uh, you know, where we just feel like we're, got, we're stuck. Ever felt like you were stuck? Yeah, and you just know, I, I, need, to, I need to do something to unlock this. I, I've been on this level for too long, and, and you just know there's something more for you, there's something better for you, there's something different for you. And, and this is what we run into in Genesis Uh, 12 and 13, where God has given Abraham a directive and a vision, but as he heads out into this vision, he he hits some definite places where he kind of gets stuck, and we're just unlocking and unpacking exactly what happened that allowed Abraham to keep going, to, to not get stuck in this season in his life. And so just a couple of ideas that I've talked about, and, and I would encourage you if you haven't heard these, and you're feel, especially if you're feeling stuck, this would be great to go back. You can find, you can get these messages online. Uh, you could go to our website and watch them and just be a great opportunity. We're finding more and more people are watching uh, online uh, when they go away on a vacation or just their, their friends have been told about it and they're watching. So everybody who's watching online, good morning. Good to see you guys. Uh, glad, glad you're on. But let, let's talk about this. Number one is you got to avoid destination disease. Uh, I think everybody has destination disease at some point in life. It's the belief that if we just arrive somewhere, if we attain a position, accomplish some goal, have a relationship with the right person, we'll be successful. And the idea is always this. When I get there then I'll be happy. When I get there, I'll walk in peace. When I get there, I'll, I'll allow myself to feel like I'm succeeding or that my life is working or that the blessing of God is on my life. And I just want to remind us that the, the blessing of God and the will of God is, is happening right now in your life. Genesis 13, 2, the Bible says now. Everybody say now. Now, while he's on his journey, he's on the way, he's not there yet. Now, Abram was very rich in livestock and silver and in gold. Number two, we talked about this idea, which is enormous and powerful. What you associate with will become yours. Genesis 13, 1 and 2, Abram went up from Egypt to the Negev. He and his wife and all that belonged to him Lot went with him. Abram was very rich in livestock and silver and in gold. And verse 5 says, Now Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents. It, it is an amazing thing about the human condition, and, that, and, and it holds true. The Bible teaches us this over and over and over again. But this idea that Lot was blessed because of his association with Abraham. And because Lot hung out with Abraham, Abraham had cattle, Lot had cattle. You just get used to what's around you. So I'm always encouraging people, find out, find what God is blessing, find who God is blessing, and get around it, associate with it. Find out where things are happening good and hang around there, and good things will start to happen in your life. And then it works for the negative as well. (laughs) Bad things can get on you just as bad as good things can get on you. And then last week I talked about this idea, which I think is kind of the, 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 the main pivot point of this whole series, is this idea of you got to make room for the next level. Abraham's 
uh, herdsmen, Lot's herdsmen, Genesis 13, they start fighting with each other. They start arguing, and Abram makes this bold move and steps up to Lot and says, our guys are fighting each other. Please separate from me. That's a big move. <laughs> it's a hard move to make. But in order to get to the next chapter, in order to get past your malfunction junction sometime, you've got to have this capacity to say, it's time to make some changes up in here. And, and I think it's a powerful thing because not only did he have, he had this kind of tension that he managed so well where he actually told uh, Lot, hey, listen, you, please separate from me, but you choose, if you choose to go right, I'll go left. If you choose to go left, I'll go right. You choose whichever way you want to go, and, and we are going to move on, and I'm just going to defer to your left, I'll go right, or your right, and I'll go left, but I'm going to walk in the blessing of God. There's no use in us staying here and fighting, and I think a lot of people get stuck fighting get stuck trying to insist on fair and lot was i mean abraham was able to let that go and move on with his life don't get stuck fighting for fair it, it can it can stick you for a long time anyway that's what i talked about last week this is what i want to talk about today number four is this fresh encounters with God will get you unstuck. Fresh encounters with God will get you unstuck. So in Genesis 13, uh, verse 3, so he went on his journeys from the Negev as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning. Everybody say the beginning. Between Bethel and Ai to the place of the altar which he had made there formerly. Say formerly. So he's going to a place where he started and he's going to a former altar and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Now Lot who went with Abram also had flocks and herds and tents and the land could not sustain them while dwelling together, for their possessions were so great, they were not able to remain together. You can't move forward if you keep looking back. Lot and Abraham went back to a place that they were familiar with. They went back to a place, a former altar. They went back to the place where they were beginning, and that's where the trouble began for them. Because they went back to a place where they had had a genuine experience with God. And now they're trying to go back to a place that they had outgrown. What they had now, all the flocks and herds and tents and, and blessing of God and who they were now was too big and too much for that place. They had grown, but now they're going back to a place that felt familiar. And the truth is, I think it's, it's easy for all of us to go back to familiar. Back to a place that feels safe, maybe. Back to a place that we think doesn't really require much effort because we know it. We just, we know how it works in that place. We've been there. It's easy to go back. And they ran into trouble when they started going backwards. They got stuck when they 
weren't willing to build a new altar, where they weren't willing to move on with God and move on with life. And I just want to suggest to you today that to break through some of our malfunction junctions, we're going to have to determine to stop retreating to the places that we've always known. The places we've always known in life, the places we've always known in God. Jim Rohn used to say, the reason they make those second grade desks so small is so you won't keep going back (laughs) to them. And I think of all people, I hear this a lot in church world, religious world, this idea that we need to go back to something. And I I honestly think it's a religious spirit, if you will, that always wants to go back. I think religion starts happening. How many know there's a difference between a real honest relationship or religion? I'm not a fan of religion. I am a fan of relationship. And I think religion starts happening when the flesh starts to try to recreate something that the Holy Spirit has once done or that has been a powerful moment for us and we're trying to go back to it because that was a glory moment. That was a fantastic opportunity. That was like, wow, there was a blue haze in the air or something, I don't know. And I, I want to I wanna get us to think in a different direction. God likes to do new things in new ways. I said God likes to do new things in new ways. We're we're all just discovering God doesn't change, but we're discovering everything he has and how he does things. Isaiah 42, 9 says this, Behold, the former things have come to pass. Anybody glad things come to pass? Now, I know some of you guys are glad that summer is coming to pass, but you are wrong. (laughs) Because cold is horrid. And I'm always looking forward to that coming to pass but thank God things come to pass think if you're going through a difficulty things come to pass hallelujah but not only do bad things come to pass but good things come to pass things come to pass they don't come to stay they come to pass behold the The former things have come to pass. Now I declare new things. Before they spring forth, I proclaim them to you. Sing to the Lord a new song. (laughs) Because God is sick and tired of those old songs. And I know there, there would be a some situations where people would not like me saying that. Sing his praise from the end of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that's in it, you islands and all those who dwell in it, it all comes to pass. And the Bible says, sing a new song. Maybe it's time to change your tune. I always, 
one thing I like, I'm a music lover, and uh, one of the things that I think music does is shape the theme. It's the soundtrack of seasons. And uh, I, I, love, I love the soundtrack of, of different seasons. And, and I, I'd like, I actually, I love the sound of the songs of my youth. Uh, I, I do. Like, I love Motown music. Anybody like Motown music? Come on. Sugar pie, honey bunch. You know that I love you. I love that stuff. I can, I love that stuff. But it is the, it's the theme song of my youth. And I think nostalgia is fun. But how many of you recognize that nostalgia has selective memory? Come on. <laughs> and I think sometimes people want to sing the old song and go back to the old thing because they have a bit of a selective memory about the way things used to be that somehow it gets enlarged and beautified and they, they can't realize that God is saying, behold, Everything comes to pass. Now I declare a new thing. Isaiah 43, 18 says this, Do not call to mind the former things or ponder the things of the past. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I like it. God is saying, behold, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you new roads and new rivers. Everybody say new roads and new rivers. New roads, new paths, new ways, new direction. New roads. God can give you a new road. And then new rivers, I believe, is that's, that's something that comes from the throne of God. That's the resource of God coming into our life. Some, you know, I talked about wells last week. Sometimes wells dry up. Sometimes wells get stopped up. Sometimes rivers change course. And... I think sometimes we get locked in to the way things used to work out for us, but now they don't work out. That river's dried up. But I just want to tell you today, God wants to give you new roads and new rivers. And it might be a good idea to let go of your past. To to let, let go of your past failures, of course. And don't let them keep haunting you, but I'm going to encourage you to consider letting go of some of your past successes, your past history, the fact that I've been a believer for a long time, but because I've been a believer for a long time, that doesn't ensure that I'm current in my relationship with God today. I, I, know, the, I know the routine. I know how church works. I know, I know how it all works. I know how the, the whole Christian world works. And it would be easy to take all that past experience and keep somehow living on it. I'm suggesting that your past may not be serving you so well. I, I, I want you to cherish your memories. I, I think it's good. Sing your Motown songs and have a blast, <laughs> you know. Sing your Led Zeppelin and have a blast. Come on, just whatever, what, whatever, and learn your lessons, but don't, don't keep running back to your past. Don't, don't let the regret of your past or the sorrow of your past keep coming into today. 
Let go. Let go of the pain, <laughs> you know? But let go of the successes too. Because I'm after something today. You can't keep growing if you're always going back. You can't, it feels secure, it feels safe, it feels comfortable, but you, but you can't go forward if you keep looking backwards. If you keep going back to the safe and familiar and comfortable places, maybe some of us are stuck at malfunction junctions because we keep going back to the old habits or we keep going back to the old friends or we keep going back to the old thinking or we keep going back to the old places in God. Give me that old time religion. And I, it's the cry of, of some tribes. I want to go back. If only we could get this back. And I'm here to declare to you new roads and new rivers. So, let me, move, let, me, let me move into this next idea. Uh, Genesis 13, verse 14. The Lord said to Abram after Lot had separated from him, after he cleared the air, now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, north and south and east and west, for all the land which you see, I'll give it to you and your descendants forever. I'll make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if anyone can number the dust of the earth, your descendants can also be numbered. Arise, walk about the land through its length and its breadth, for I will give it to you. In other words, what God is saying to Abraham is he's saying, remember what I told you in Genesis 12? <laughs> I want you to, I want now that you've cleared the spot, you've cleared your life, you've separated from Lot, now I want you to take a fresh look at the same vision from a new vantage point. He says, lift up your eyes and look. Because, you know, sometimes when you go through where you, where you make a change or you separate from something or you just, you, finally, you said, finally, that's it, I'm done. I got to move on. You go left, I go right. We got to move forward. Sometimes it's easy to get focused on your loss, but it's, sometimes it's good to clear the air and go, maybe I ought to look around at what I have and not what I lost. Look around what I have instead of what I don't have. Look around at the opportunities that surround me now. I couldn't see them when I was here, but now that I'm here, I see something different. Look at the things you can be thankful for now. Look at the things you can improve now. I think it's amazing because God spends the time saying to Abraham the same thing he said in Genesis 12. In other words, he reiterates to Abraham the same vision but Abraham is not the same person that God spoke to in Genesis 12. And let me, let me say this, because I, I think I want us to understand this. If your vision is changing every two or three years, you're never going to get anywhere. God is, God is saying, he's saying to Abraham, listen, Marry the vision, date the method. M marry the message, date the method. I think, I think what happens in a, in a lot of churches, if you'll find most churches that are healthy and strong, the pastor's been there for a while. And their pastor's committed to the, to the winters and the summers. When Suzette and I moved to Asheville 27 years ago, it's hard to believe 27 years has passed. 
we really did move here outside of God saying to us, go somewhere else, to build for a lifetime. And, and in my thinking, 27 years is, is just the beginning for our church. But I, what I want to say is a long-term commitment to your vision is vital if you're going to carry through the storms and the seasons. At some point, you got to get an idea, this is what God wants me to do with my life and head that direction and keep heading that direction. But if your perspective on your vision isn't growing, if you're thinking, if you're believing, if your internal belief systems, <laughs> your BS, it, if, it's, if it's not, if you haven't taken a fresh look at your vision recently, it's easy for things to go stale. There are some ways to walk out the vision you've been given that two years ago, three years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you didn't have the experience, you didn't have the relationships, you didn't have the resources, you didn't have the understanding that you, got, that you can bring to it today. Everybody follow what I'm saying here? A fresh look at the same vision from a new place is vital. It's still, it's, it's still all about Jesus. That doesn't change. It's still all about leading people to Jesus. That doesn't change. When was the last time you took a fresh look at the vision of your life? I think it's so easy to get buried in the maintenance of daily. So that you don't stop and you don't reevaluate you know what, I used to look at it this way, but I think I kind of see it this way right now. Or maybe you got to reevaluate your schedule. Here's how I used to spend my time, but it doesn't fit now. Reevaluate your priorities, reevaluate your relationships. So, verse 18 of Genesis 13 says, Then Abram moved his tent and came and dwelt by the oaks of Mamre, which are in Hebron. And there he built an altar to the Lord. So instead of going back to where he had built an altar before, now he's building an altar to the Lord here, now. The lot situation had cleared out. God's giving him new vision. God's giving him new perspective. God's reiterating the direction that he gave him earlier. But now he's having a fresh encounter with God. I think some moves are so important because they move you to a place of new dependence. And, and what I want to encourage you today is, is this. You know how fresh your relationship with God really is. I think one of the ways you can know is, are there any new roads and new rivers are there any new th direction path that you see are there any new thoughts new believing fresh that's happening because that's what God gives new roads new rivers I hope you'll appreciate the fact that I am not going to let us get religious. Thank you, Jesus. And I want to encourage you today to build an altar now around this point in your life. 
You know, when you're single, you got to find God when you're in singleness. But then you get married, you got to find God married. Different. And then when you start having babies, toddlers, they love to suck up all the air in your world. And you got to find God now. Come on, when those toddlers become teenagers, that's when you know you need to find God. <laughs> right? Then when your teenagers move on, maybe you need to find him in a new way, in a new season. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to somehow go, God, please, don't ever let me get stuck going back to the former, going back to the old, going back to the safe. But I, I want a fresh encounter with you now. Anybody with me on this? Anybody with me on this? I, I, I really believe fresh encounters with God will help get you unstuck. So we're going we're gonna to take a few moments. You can just remain seated if you would. We're going to worship God together. And, and I, just, I want us to come and surrender to the Lord in the now. Built an altar at this stage of our life. So let's worship together.